let's have a chat about some of the materials that you're going to need. Here you can see some unbleached cotton, muslin or calico. It's a, a very simple, inexpensive fabric that you can find at your local fabric shop for about $10 a, a meter. Uh, you're also going to need some stretcher bars. The type that I recommend is called Evertight. And of course you, you're going to need well, you know two sets or four sides. And I like these ones because you can slot them together and the screws go on the inside and you can use an Allen key on the outside to push the screws out and uh, tighten the bars if your fabric happens to slacken off. You will also find it helpful to have this archival pen. The one I recommend is called a Sakura Micron size 005. Don't get another size. Uh, the tip is going to be too big. They come in 05, uh, size 02, 01, but the one I recommend for you is 005. You can get any color that you want. Okay, now let's talk about your metal threads. You can get some silver passing or some gilt or gold passing. I recommend size four or five, or you could even go for a six if you wanted your thread to be a little bit thicker and therefore will stitch up a tiny bit faster. If you get the gold or gilt passing, then you're gonna need some translucent thread and also some Guterman polyester sewing thread. If you decide that you want the silver thread, then you're going to want to get a Guterman um, polyester sewing thread and also a translucent white or gray thread. So you buy one set of gold or one set of the silver, not both. Okay, let's talk about needles now. So you're going to need one larger needle, a chenille needle about 18 for sinking threads and a curved needle for tying off, and a whole bunch of size 10 uh, embroidery needles um, because you're gonna have many colors and you're gonna want one needle per color. All right, you're also gonna wanna get yourself some tracing paper. I like this heavier one, a, a vellum. Uh, I find it's nice and durable and it has a nice feel to it and I can reuse it if I need to. You also want to get some white paper for drawing on. This is just plain printer paper. And you might also want to get a selection of pencils for drawing. Um, you don't need to get a whole box, so you could just have one or two pencils uh, with different hardnesses, which will allow you to shade better. We're going to need to have a nice selection of crayons or pencil crayons. I find pencil crayons work best. So perhaps see if you can borrow a set from someone that you know. You'll also need to get one of these grayscale and value finders available from the Color Wheel Company found at your local art shop and also on Amazon. You're going to need this for helping you find grayscale. Additionally, you're going to want to have a good selection of stranded cotton colors for you to choose from or access to a needle workshop where you can quickly get the colors that you need when you're ready to begin stitching up your design. If you prefer to work with silk threads over cotton threads, uh, you can. They're a bit harder to access quickly though, so make sure that you have a, a good uh, selection on hand as well if that's what you would like to use. I like to use Piper Silks for Ornoué. It's very fine uh, and you can do quite a lot of shading with Pipers. Now these measuring templates are, for me, an invaluable tool when I'm doing couching. Uh, they're available from Blue Bonnet Studios in the US and they're a set of acetate uh, rulers that already have millimeter uh, distances marked out for you. So you can get a two minute, you can use the two millimeter template or the five millimeter. You might find it helpful to have a selection of color cards 
from any provider that you frequently use. So this is a silk color card from the Japanese Embroidery Center, um, or you could use a DMC a color card to help you identify which colors that you'd like to use for your project. Um, or you can use a fabric color card that you can later on match to your threads, your DMC threads uh, from Pantone. So of course it all it depends what your budget is and what you have in your stash. Uh, but some sort of color matching card might be useful for you. You're also going to find it helpful to have some sort of notebook or sketchbook to place your various drawings in or glue pages in of images that you find. It's a good resource for you to have and start making a habit of putting all your uh, design planning in one place. You're also going to find it useful to have either a homemade set of coma. Coma essentially means um, a tool for wrapping your metal threads around so they don't get tangled and you can provide some tension to your metal threads without having to handle your metal threads with your bare hands. So you can find them from the Japanese Embroidery Center or you can make them even out of a, something as simple as a loo roll. For books, I recommend this title here, Le Trésor Brodé de la Cathédrale de puy en velay It has many excellent pictures in here of Ornoué uh, up close. Uh, this book is out of print, so you can only find it on the secondhand market, or perhaps if you're lucky, your local public library would have a copy that you could borrow. That'd be the best option, so least expensive. And as you've noticed, this book is entirely in French, but the pictures speak volumes. So I wouldn't let that uh, inhibit you uh, from enjoying this book if it's within your budget. The next book I recommend is called High Fashion in the Church by Pauline Johnstone. It's not hard to find this one uh, online. Uh, I got my copy from Amazon and it's a very, very interesting read. It looks at the different phases of art and how embroidery was influenced by art and therefore the impact that it had on ecclesiastical embroidery. And the sections, the details on um, underside couching and ornoué are really a fascinating read, the best I've seen. So I do recommend this book, particularly the chapter on the Renaissance. Uh, uh, some of it I will be able to provide for you uh, in the course. I've requested copyright, so that will be nice. The next book is by Alison Cole. Uh, this book is available from Alison Cole, her book called The Goldwork Masterclass, and she has a chapter on uh, Ornoué and has done some research and has some interesting photos as well. Um, so this could be something that's not so expensive and easily available. This one here is the catalog that went along with the exhibition at the Victoria and Albert Museum a few years ago, English Medieval Embroidery, and it also goes fairly in-depth with uh, some pictures on Ornoué and the development of Ornoué as well. The next book I recommend is also a catalogue that went along with an exhibition at a museum in the Netherlands. The book is in Dutch, but the detailed pictures here of Ornoué and also pattern couching are really uh, invaluable, a wonderful pictorial reference. So this book is a treat if you can find it on the secondhand market as well. You might also find it helpful to have a book on drawing light and shade. This one in particular is inexpensive and I found this on Amazon and your public library will have lots of similar books. So this one in particular looks like 
looks at chiaro scuro and how we can identify value in a design, which is uh, the what made Ornoué so masterful. And finally, also at your public library, any book on the Renaissance uh, for you to look at images of what kind of art was developed, particularly in the early side, the, the early part of the 1400s, would be a useful guide for you as well. And finally, this book called Color Studies by Edith Anderson Feisner, in any edition, would be a useful tool for you. It has everything you ever wanted to know about color in it. There's even a two-page section on color and metals. Uh, I found this book to be an invaluable resource.